All right, so let's uh, let's tackle the third kind of limit now, and this one is kind of tricky. The uh, third kind of limit, it looks like this, not zero over zero. So when you put the number in at the beginning, it's uh, a non-zero number over zero. Let's do it a little example, something like this maybe. The limit as x goes to zero. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to introduce right and left limits here. But do uh, you know what this means when I write? Let me just, I'm going to write down three questions here, and we're going to analyze each one, okay? You see, when I write this, this plus and minus, this has nothing to do with positive and negative, okay? Positive negative signs, they go on the left of the number, right? These, these, these plus and minus signs, they're kind of like, I don't want to say exponents, but, you know, they're, they're superscripts. They're, they're uh, written up high like this, okay? And they don't mean positive or negative. They mean right and left, okay? This plus means right, and this minus means uh, left. Plus means right, minus means left. So this means I'm, I'm approaching x. I'm approaching 0 from the right. Let's think about that a little bit. Here's 0. To the right of 0, and this is like maybe 1, and this is like minus 1. I'm, a, I'm, I'm taking numbers that are very close to 0, but to the right of 0. Okay. Now, wouldn't you agree that these kind of numbers, these are like small positive numbers, right? And this is the way we got to start thinking. Um, if we take a small positive number, if x goes to 0 from the right, x being close to 0 means it's small, okay? And positive means that we're on the right-hand side of 0. If we take a small positive number and we go 1 divided by a small positive number, what kind of answer do you think you're going to get? Think about that really carefully. What is 1 divided by a small positive number? I'm just going to abbreviate that as 1 divided by a small positive number. What kind of number do you get? Why don't we go to our calculator and just try a little experiment. If we go, uh, you know, maybe 1 divided by, like, 1 divided by uh, 0. Point, what's an example of a small positive number? Maybe like 0. 0.001 or something, huh? What is 1 divided by 0 0.001? It's a thousand. Oh, so that's kind of a big number, isn't it? And it's positive. What if I would have took an even smaller number? Maybe, uh, how about something like this? 1 divided by, let's do a real, real small positive number now. 1 divided by like 0 0.000001, something like that. What do we get here? 1 divided by 0 0.00001 is, oh, it's a million. Okay. So what I want to, what I want you guys to get from this is that if I go 1 divided by a small positive number, I get a big positive number. Okay. This is, this is a big positive number, right? And the smaller the number is, the bigger my answer is going to be. So do you guys have a guess what this would be? I'm taking 1 divided by really small positive numbers. And x going to 0 means I'm getting closer and closer and closer to 0, never actually touching 0, but I'm getting closer and closer to 0. That means these numbers are getting smaller and smaller. And so 1 divided by these smaller and smaller numbers, the answers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the answer is plus infinity. Okay, So maybe that's a little bit... Maybe that's like a new kind of concept for you, but really all this is saying is that as x goes to 0 from the right-hand side, in other words, as x is becoming uh, closer and closer to 0, but from the positive direction, 1 over those numbers is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so kind of in the end, the answer is plus infinity. And you know what? You don't have to write the plus sign in front of infinity. You can just write infinity because... Uh, it's kind of like it's understood that plus infinity is the same as infinity. Okay, it's just like a little rule. You can write plus infinity or infinity, either is fine. How about this one, though? Let's check out this one. 
This time I'm going to zero, but now I'm going from the left-hand side of zero. So what kind of numbers are these? Well, they're, they're close to zero, so they're still small. Um, but now they're negative, right? So these are small negative numbers. Small negative numbers. Okay? And uh, what if I do something like this? What is 1 divided by a small negative number? Well, if, if, I put, if I did something like this, 1 divided by a negative 0 0.00001, my answer then would be negative a million. So I, I think you might agree with me that 1 divided by a small negative number is a big negative number, okay? And so what do you think the answer here is going to be? Well, as x gets smaller and smaller, but always negative, this, is, this quantity 1 divided by that is getting bigger and bigger negative. So the answer is minus infinity. Is that okay? Notice here the plus sign was optional, okay? But here the minus sign is necessary, okay? You have to write the minus infinity there for it to make sense. My minus sign is a little bit long there, okay? Now how about this limit? This is, these two guys are, this is called the right-hand limit. This is the left-hand limit. So these guys are called one-sided limits. When we write this, when, when there's no plus or minus here, that's called a two-sided limit, okay? And how does that work? Well, if to decide if the two-sided limit is okay, what you do is you calculate the right and the left, and if they're the same answer, then the two-sided limit is defined, and the answer is the common value there. But if these numbers are different, or these quantities are different, like here, if the left and right limits are not the same, then the two-sided limit does not exist, or, um, or is undefined, whatever you want to say, does not exist. Does not exist is just like, you could also say not defined, um, lots of different ways of, of saying that, okay? So let me just explain that again. Notice that we got different answers for the left and right limits, right? If you ever get different answers for the right and left limit, then the two-sided limit does not exist, okay? If we would have got both the same answer here, then the two-sided limit would have existed, all right? Let's erase this stuff down here. Let's just do another quick little example just to kind of make this point a little bit more clear. How about we try this? The limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over x squared. And the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of 1 over x squared. And then the two-sided limit of 1 over x squared. By the way, notice when I put 0 in here, I get 1 over 0, right? 1 is not 0, and the bottom is 0, so we're in type 3. All of these guys are of type 3 limit, right? Not 0 over 0. So if I take a small positive number and I square it, do you know that I even get a smaller positive number? Do you believe me there? Like 0 0.1 squared? It's 0 0.01, right? So if I squ square a small positive number, I even get a smaller positive number. So as I take small positive numbers, I square it, I get a still a small positive number, and 1 divided by a small positive number is a big positive number. So kind of in the end, the answer is plus infinity, or infinity. How about here? Now this is important. Let's check this out. If we take a small negative number and I square it, it's no longer negative, is it? When I square a number, it always turns out to be positive, no matter what. So I have like 1 over a small, well, take a small negative number, square it, becomes a small positive number, and 1 divided by a small positive number is a big positive number. So in the end, the answer is plus infinity. And now look in this case. In this case, both of these answers are the same. Both the left and right limits are the same, so my two-sided limit is also plus infinity. All right, so this is our first uh, kind of foray into understanding these kinds of limits, not 0 over 0. We'll keep talking about it in the next video.